America says its fight against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is the most important front in its war on terror, requiring airstrikes and the use of local counterinsurgency forces in Yemen and elsewhere. But will that strategy backfire? With the killing of civilians in some of these attacks was used by AQIP as also a recruiting device. So these, these incidents have certainly contributed or have been used certainly to recruit radicals. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, a terrorist group based in Yemen, continues to plan attacks against our homeland, our citizens, and our friends and allies. AQAP, uh, which currently I, I, we view as the primary uh, threat to the homeland. The counterterrorism community has been kept very busy with reports about Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula trying to carry out attacks in Yemen and that region as well as against the United States. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP, has emerged as the most dangerous regional node in the global jihad. Sana'a, Yemen. According to the U.S., this is the real front line in its global war on Al-Qaeda, not Afghanistan or Pakistan. In the early morning calm, the old city looks timeless and permanent. These buildings have stood here for centuries, and posters of President Ali Abdullah Saleh have hung from their walls for the last 33 years. The U.S. gave Saleh's regime hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid and saw him as a key ally. With Saleh out of office, after a year of sustained popular protests, America's campaign against Al-Qaeda in Yemen has been thrown into crisis. Yemen's connection with Al-Qaeda and terrorist groups uh, goes back to the jihad uh, days of Afghanistan. Abdul Ghani al Iryani is a well-connected Yemeni political analyst. The Yemeni government got involved in recruiting for the jihad in Afghanistan. Of course, that was sanctioned by the U.S. and by Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia financed that. So thousands upon thousands of Yemeni youth ended up being indoctrinated in militant Islam in Afghanistan and coming back and starting their own militant cells here. The regime continued to be very complicit in uh, aiding and abetting terrorist groups, harboring them, covering up for them, and uh, it, it, until today, uh, I am convinced that many terrorists in Yemen are still connected to national security apparatus, to the president's office, and to people very close to the top leadership of the country. Abu Ghani says that the Saleh regime played to American and Saudi fears about al-Qaeda and then used their military aid for its own purposes. Do you think that they actually had a commitment to the same agenda as the U.S. Uh, regarding al-Qaeda? Not at all. Not at not even close, because it was the cash cow. Why would, you, why would you get rid of your source of income? It doesn't make sense to them. To start with, they should have never made counterterrorism a source of profit for the regime, because that, in, that increased terrorism. Secondly, use of military force was a bad mistake. Military action often backfires by killing civilians and by, uh, by the the violation of sovereignty that uh, offends lots of Yemenis. Last May, militants calling themselves Ansar al-Sharia captured the city of Zinjibar, the capital of Abiyan province in southern Yemen. Yemen's central security forces, whose counterterrorism units are funded by the U.S., abandon their positions in heavy weaponry to the militants. Zinjibar remains under Ansar al-Sharia's control. Last year, 
Right now in Abiyan, uh, there are thousands of fighters uh, fighting under the banner of Ansar al-Sharia against the government. Uh, and people say these are AQAP. They're not. There is a, a nucleus of AQAP. But the vast majority are people who are aggrieved by uh, attacks uh, by the U.S. and by the Yemeni government on their homes that forced them to go out and fight. So this isn't about establishing the caliphate? No, it's about revenge. General Somali leads a 25th Mechanized Brigade. He is tasked with retaking Zinjibar. Do you believe that Ansar al-Sharia is Al-Qaeda or is it something else? General Somali reluctantly agrees to take us to his front line. He has been ambushed twice on this road in his bullet-scarred armored land cruiser. We drive past Unity Stadium, renovated for the Gulf 20 football tournament in 2010. Once a symbol of modernity and tourism, the stadium was seized by militants until Somali's forces shelled it and forced them back. <laughs> For more than three months, Somali and his men were trapped here, surrounded by militants. His troops lack the equipment and training of Yemen's U.S.-backed counterterrorism units, but he says American support was instrumental in surviving the siege. Before last year, AQAP had never captured and held territory. But Ansar al-Sharia remains in control of Zinjibar and has announced the formation of an Islamic government in southern Yemen. Ansar al-Sharia appears to be tapping into mainstream anger at the Saleh regime and the Americans. To try to understand that anger, we met the leader of the largest tribe in the south, Sheikh Saleh bin Farid. Our family the ruling family, the Sultan, they used to have a treaty with the British government. So in 1968, the Socialist Party ordered all the Sultans out of the country. The Union Jack was dipped for the last time on these inhospitable shores. The withdrawal was almost over. When Ali Abdullah Saleh became the first president of a unified Yemen, he invited back the old tribal leaders to balance the strength of the socialists and separatists. So uh, when the Socialist Party lost, President Ali Abdullah Saleh called us. He said, you have a lot of uh, support, you have a lot of followers, and we need you back. So I came back in 1991. 
When was the first time that you heard about someone being Al Qaeda in that area? It is, uh, I, I never knew that anybody belonged to Al Qaeda, except in the last uh, three years, and especially after the American attack, Al Ma'gila. On December 17th, 2009, U.S. cruise missiles were launched from the Arabian Sea, targeting the tiny Bedouin village of Al Ma'gila. <laughs> It was the Obama administration's first missile strike on Yemen, but it would be the first of many. We got telephones from, from those uh, people, and of course the news was on the Al Jazeera. And the government alleged to have targeted the Al Qaeda hideouts in a preventive operation, killing 34 members. Our government attacked Al Qaeda base in Al Majala, where uh, Al Qaeda have a field for training and they have huge stores for all kinds of weapons and ammunition and rockets and all this. And they did not mention the Americans at all. When we went there, we saw what happened. I mean, I mean uh, if somebody got weak heart, I think he will collapse. You see goats and sheep all over. See the heads of the, those who were killed here and there. You see children. And you, you cannot tell this meat belongs to animals or to human beings. And, and very sad, very sad, very sad. And un, 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 unbelievable. Why they do this? Why the hell they do this? We, there is no stores. There is no field for training. There is nobody except a very poor tribe one of the poorest tribes in uh, the South. It takes 12 hours to reach Al Majula by car, avoiding the checkpoints militants have set up along the main road. The survivors left missile parts rusting in the fields where they fell, hoping that one day people would come to investigate their story. واللي كانوا حاضرين موجودين هناك لما شافوا هذه الدخان اللي طلع مع هذه ماتوا كلهم اطفال ونساء اطفال ونساء وشيوخ فقط يعني ثلاثه من شباب ولا البقيه كلهم شيوخ ونساء واطفال يعني خمسه واربعين سته واربعين بما سته خمس خمسه حريم يحملين في في بطونهن اجنه When we went there, we saw what happened. Of course, our government does not have this kind of rockets. And you see all the shells all over, Un unbelievable. Of course, there was marking made in the United States of America. It was all recorded. Do people there want revenge against the United States for this? I think they have created, again, many enemies in, in Yemen. When the WikiLeaks cables were released, they revealed a meeting shortly after the Al Majula attack between U.S. General David Petraeus and President Saleh. In the meeting, Petraeus announces that U.S. military aid will be increased to $150 million a year, 
and Salah's men joke with the Americans about lying to the Yemeni people about the Al-Majla attack. Salah assures General Petraeus that, quote, we'll continue saying the bombs are ours and not yours. Alongside its aggressive bombing campaign, the Obama administration funneled money into a Yemeni counterterrorism unit, the CTU, led by the president's nephew, Yahya Saleh. In 2009, U.S. military aid more than tripled, and in 2010, it doubled again. The opposition calls the CTU Saleh's family military, as opposed to the national military, which they say does most of the actual fighting against Al-Qaeda. The opposition sees them as elite U.S.-trained defenders of the Saleh regime. It was mostly for the defense of the regime. Until today, counterterrorism forces have not been deployed in any effective way. They're still here in the palace, protecting the palace. That's how it is. I could say with confidence that some of the resources of the counterterrorism forces were used against the, the peaceful demonstrators in the protest square. Uh, I've spoken to eyewitnesses that have seen some of those uh, counterterrorism officers in the scene at triad places. Engaged in operations? Yes. Saleh was the only president a unified Yemen had ever known. He weathered constant rebellions and periodic civil wars, but could not survive the sustained popular protests that continue today in the streets of the capital. Scores were killed last March when Saleh's regime tried to put down the protests with force, but they only gathered momentum. Amin Arabiya is a human rights lawyer and longtime opposition activist. He, like many in the opposition, holds the U.S. at least indirectly responsible for the deaths as a backer of the Saleh regime. But Amin claims that the Saleh regime's biggest crime is allowing U.S. missile attacks inside the country. The outrage over U.S. missile strikes is not confined to opposition activists. Even Saleh's foreign minister, Abu Bakr al-Kirbi, admits that U.S. counterterrorism policy in Yemen has caused blowback. He says the Al-Majla attack in particular was a mistake. Well, Majla has always been an unfortunate incident because it uh, uh, really attacked a civilian uh, uh, population. As you see in uh, Pakistan and other parts of the world, they always raise a lot of resentment. Do you think the American bombings have helped Al-Qaeda in Yemen? Uh, I'm sure they, uh, that uh, some elements will feel sympathetic to them. We've made progress. Al-Qaeda's leadership is hunkered down. Training camps have been struck. Leaders eliminated. Plots disrupted. We have worked closely with partners, including Yemen, to inflict major blows against Al-Qaeda leaders. The Obama administration has dramatically escalated its missile strikes inside Yemen. These attacks are celebrated as crippling blows against Al-Qaeda but some intelligence experts question their strategic impact. Our attacks on civilians, let's say, or, or the killing of civilians in some of these attacks was used by AQIP as also a recruiting device. So these, these incidents have certainly contributed or have been used, certainly, to recruit radicals. There's no doubt about it. Emil Nakla was the highest-ranking CIA analyst on the Middle East and the founder of the CIA's political Islam program. Nakla says that U.S. assassinations have crippled al-Qaeda's central leadership, but that regional groups like AQAP have become more powerful. Do you think al-Qaeda in Yemen 
is stronger now than it was on 9-11? Um, um, it is, yeah, because on 9-11, uh, the strength really was Al-Qaeda Central. And regional organizations were really trying to even vying for, uh, for a better connection to Al-Qaeda Central. So their strength today is definitely much more, much, much bigger really than it was on 9-11. The worst thing for us to do is to declare Yemen as a new front in the war on, on, on terror because that's what Al-Qaeda would love us to, 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 to do because then they will make the argument, well, this is, you know, we, we went to Afghanistan, we went to Iraq, and now we are in Yemen. Back in southern Yemen, Ansar al-Sharia remains in control of Zinjibar and a wave of assassinations have targeted government security forces. We meet with Mullah Zabara, a tribal leader who has often served as a mediator in negotiations with AQAP. He helped secure the release of three French hostages last November, but has failed to negotiate a peace with the rebels in Zinjibar. Mullah Zabara tells us that Al-Qaeda, which was once in hiding, is now able to operate in the open. <laughs> ويمكن توصل إلى 150 ألف اللي هي القبيلة الأكبر ويمكن توصل إلى 500 ألف اللي هي قبائل العوالق هؤلاء كلهم يحمون ولا تقدر القاعدة تأتدي عليهم اللي يقول أما كلمة الحق ونحن نقولها إن كان مع القاعدة وإن كان مع غيرها Mullah Zabara may be overstating his tribe's fighting strength but it is certainly true that Yemen's tribes are more powerful than Al-Qaeda but Mullah Zabara says the tribes see little point in fighting to protect a corrupt and predatory state ولماذا نحن خسرانا نيش ليش غاتل؟ ليش؟ هل جاتني مدرسة؟ هل جاني مستشفى؟ هل جاني طريق؟ لماذا غاتل؟ يعيش؟ ما مش مستفيد أنا من قتالها لأنهم يسموا القاعدة إرهاب ولكن نحن عندنا الإرهاب الطائرات اللي فوقنا هي الإرهاب America's counterterrorism strategy in Yemen has relied on airstrikes and support for the Saleh regime's own counterterrorism forces. But a decade after this strategy began, Al Qaeda is stronger here than it has ever been. It was a major fiasco. The Yemeni government saw the need, uh, saw the opportunity to uh, exploit terrorism. Uh, and extort money from the U.S. and from Saudi Arabia and others, and they used it to the fullest. And as a consequence, the spread of terrorism and the entrenchment of terrorism increased over the same period. I think if we had been left alone, we would have less terrorists in Yemen than we do now. You can kill all the leaders, radical leaders in Yemen, if you maintain the same nepotistic, um, a repressive, corrupt regime in Sana'a, um, the killing of those leaders is not going to weaken the movement, it's going to increase and energize the movement. We've been able to uh, liquidate some of the AQAP leaders. I don't think beyond that we have gained much with the Saleh regime. Um, the fact is that his people decided to topple him and we really couldn't save him. We should become humble enough to realize that targeting these leaders is fine, but that in the long run, it's the people who are going to decide the fate of their own regimes, as the Arab Spring has shown.